A gift from Matilda Dodge Wilson and Alfred Wilson led to the founding of a university dedicated to the liberal arts. They planned a university with an emphasis on quality and depth, and all students spent half their time in liberal learning. Students would become creative and critical thinkers and leaders. Today, that vision may be found in the College of Arts and Sciences. Ours is a professional school, preparing undergraduate and graduate students in human resource development, teacher education, counseling, organizational, educational, and higher ed leadership. To do that, we seek to connect five things, curriculum, clinical experiences, community partnerships, scholarship, and social justice. You know, engineering computer science is going through a challenge of meeting the de uh, talent demand out there in the economy. I'm very proud of our faculty and staff who rise up to the occasion and revamped our curriculum in such a way to offer program in electrification, autonomous system, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, data science, and other area in order to meet that demand. The Graduate School supports student success in a number of ways. We support each phase of the graduate student life cycle from the point of initial application all the way through to the final degree audit. This includes having graduate students well supported with professional development and networking opportunities and that graduate students feel a sense of belonging at Oakland. Built upon the foundations of the natural and behavioral sciences, the School of Health Sciences transforms students into leaders, connects theory to best practices, and impacts the needs of all people and communities. Here at OU in the School of Health Sciences, we have established a distinct educational and experiential learning core through our five themes. As the largest nursing program in the state of Michigan, we provide healthcare systems and community partners with the most qualified nurses at all levels through our programs. With the majority of our faculty maintaining their practice while teaching and School of Nursing mission to prepare transformational leaders, we aspire to prepare most qualified nurses who are change champions. The University Library services and resources support student success, facilitate research, and promote lifelong learning. We offer engaging learning experiences and innovative, safe, and welcoming spaces for our diverse community. We'll create engaging learning experiences and services that offer learners the opportunity to develop critical thinking and metacognitive skills. At Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine, we deliver an innovative four-year curriculum that combines the basic and clinical sciences. In fact, in the very first semester, our students receive skills instruction and patient encounters in a realistic setting at our Clinical Skills Training and Simulation Center. Our program of study includes an organ system-based preclinical curriculum and is integrated with courses in the art and practice of medicine, medical humanities, and clinical bioethics. The School of Business at Oakland University aspires to deliver first-rate degree, certificate, and executive education programs to individuals in the state of Michigan and throughout the world. Oakland University leads among Michigan's universities in the percentage of graduates who stay in the state of Michigan. The School of Education and Human Services is integral to that leadership. Approximately 80% of school administrators in our region have degrees from the School of Education and Human Services. Thousands of area teachers have undergraduate and graduate degrees as well as certificates from us. Every year we graduate about 800 students from our school. And I'm very proud to say 90%, over 90% get jobs. 99% stay in Michigan with an average salary of $75,000. That's a huge economic impact of our state. I'm very proud of it. The College of Arts and Sciences has profound impact in our region and our state. Our centers, galleries, Lorax, public lectures, camps, and performances bring the community to campus and promote Oakland University's students and faculty in southeastern Michigan. The College of Arts and Sciences is the legacy and the heart and soul of Oakland University. Since 2015, a total of 265 of our alumni physicians have entered residency training at medical centers in our great state of Michigan. Last year alone, 34 of our physicians remained in our state to train in specialties such as diagnostic radiology, family medicine, and urology. 
We know that over 80% of our graduates seek job opportunities in Michigan. The recent reaccreditation of the School of Nursing for 10 years and approval by the Michigan Board of Nursing to expand our undergraduate program will allow us to become a key player in contributing to the solution of the current nursing shortage in our state. There is an urgent demand for healthcare professionals in Michigan, and the School of Health Sciences is engaged in all areas and walks of life. Our graduates become tomorrow's healthcare professionals taking key roles in serving community and health care. The School of Business at Oakland University helps to deliver a pipeline of undergraduate and graduate student talent to business communities in the state of Michigan and beyond. The expansion of our online degree program offerings will help to enhance the diversity of this talent pipeline. All of this is done with an eye to being of genuine benefit and service and with a heart for justice. We, our faculty, staff, students, and alumni lead. Hello, my name is Dr. Enrique Rio Celes. I'm a visiting associate professor in the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. I'm also the jazz coordinator. Welcome, everybody. Um, uh, we are the OU Latin Jazz Ensemble right here. And uh, we're going to play uh, a Latin jazz tune called Este Son. And um, wow, you got so quiet now. <laughs> this is supposed to be fun, OK? So we are. Uh, actually, what I need is your participation, all right? So we are going to do this type of thing of call and response. This type of music requires a lot of participation, and if you want to dance, go ahead. You already had lunch, so it might be a good thing to move. Um, it has very difficult lyrics, though. Uh, so I printed these lyrics. Uh, last year seemed to work. So it says, baila, baila. Can you repeat that? Baila. 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 Good. So we're going to go, baila. Baila. You got it. We already rehearsed. That's really, really good. So um, they asked me about Latin jazz. What is Latin jazz? So Latin jazz is a combination, a fusion of different elements, rhythms, and, uh, and instrumentation from different parts of the world, particularly Africa, the Caribbean, Latin America, and, of course, uh, Europe. So um, I'm going to stop talking, and we're going to demonstrate how all of these things work, OK? So first of all, we're going to start with congas from Africa. Here we go. We're going to add the timbales from the Caribbean. Here we go. We're going to add the claves, which is the glue of this type of music. You can do this with us. Here we go. We're going to add the quijada de burro from Africa and many parts of Latin America. Now we're going to add the drums. One, two, three, ah. Keep going. We're going to add the heart of this Latin music, the bass. the guitar from Spain. Here we go. We're going to add the 88 keys from Europe piano. Nobody's dancing. We're going to add the horns from Europe. Hasta por la madruga, mira que se pone bueno, de ni arriba de vaca, si te fuera una nichina, esta son se acabará. Cuando tú bailas conmigo, y según la aprenderás, que tu cuerpo pone de como son el chan chan chan. Oye, china, este son. Hasta 
mañana por la madrugada. much. Come to our concert on Saturday. We'll be playing a full concert. Thank you so much. So welcome everyone and thank you so much for being here today. I'd like to request that you please keep your phones handy um, as there will be an opportunity for some audience participation shortly. I won't ask you to dance. I won't ask you to play the clave, I promise, but please have your phones ready. I want to start by reminding everyone that Oakland University resides on the ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands of the Anishinaabe, known as the Three Fires Confederacy. If we are to truly honor the widespread Native American practice that we must protect the land for seven generations, we must ensure that OU's land acknowledgement is both actionable and sustainable. As we fully emerge from what seems like a never-ending pandemic, layered by a myriad of traumatic events and tragedies, the fact that we're all here bringing our best selves to work every day renders my gratitude truly overwhelming. I know that some of our exceptional faculty and staff are tired from the pandemic, exhausted by the compounding episodes we continue to witness and disheartened by the reflections of incivility that plague our nation and our planet. I also know that the budget cuts we have endured, particularly due to our historic overdependence on tuition revenue during times of declining enrollment, haven't made anything easier. Despite our shared challenges, I am really excited about our program today, and I hope that you are too inspired after witnessing the fusion of academic, musical, and cultural knowledge from our Latin Jazz Ensemble. 
Experiencing the diverse origins of instrumentation harkens a deeper demonstration of just how important our, our DEI, is DEI rather, to our institution's development, its sustainability, and most importantly, our evolution as humanity. As we transition from the rich diversity and intersectional energy of salsa to the state of academic affairs, I wanna thank you once again for your untiring good energy and the contributions you make to our students' development every day. Even with the pandemic somewhat resolved, our students' learning needs and environmental contexts are increasingly diverse, rendering some of our approaches to teaching and learning not as effective as they were prior to COVID. We are undoubtedly different and our student population has changed dramatically. At times it appears that we keep asking you to do more, and maybe we do, work harder and innovate quicker, and admittedly, to a certain extent, this new territory we find ourselves on is unknown. These shifts in terms of demography, geography, and context, compounded by what occurred during the pandemic, translate to a need to respond distinctly to the current territory on which we find ourselves. Moreover, economic inequities have exacerbated students and their families' response to basic needs over the pursuit of an academic degree. Perhaps most importantly, education overall has been under attack, with influencers questioning the very worth of a college degree. As these data show, we are seeing an increase in the number of our students coming from Wayne and Macomb counties compared to previous years. We are also seeing small increases in students from out of state as well as international destinations. The demographics of our new students are also very different than they were 10 years ago. Almost 26% of our first time in any college or FIDIAX as we know them are underrepresented minorities. In a few minutes, we're gonna talk a little more about our retention gaps with what we call our URMs or underrepresented minorities the Pell eligible and our first generation educated, and what these mean to our transformational potential. At OU, we have witnessed an enrollment decline not unlike other institutions throughout the past couple of years, despite our best efforts. With the dedication to ensuring that our enrollments remain strong, we are now being challenged with having to do things very differently. Our students have changed, their readiness for university has declined, our demographic profile has changed, and we have all been overwhelmingly challenged over the past three years. As a school that is highly dependent on tuition, these declines are concerning. As stated earlier, without doubt, the worth of education is being increasingly questioned, especially higher education. However, even if we only look at simple economics, and despite the fact that college grads earn a median of $1.2 million throughout their lifetimes and 84% more than those with just a high school diploma, it is vital for us to keep in mind and heart that we are fighting a macro battle right now. As you can see, according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, those with a bachelor's degree will surpass the median weekly earning level and represent just 3.5% of those un unemployed, compared to nearly double the unemployment rate of high school graduates. We all know that the right to learn and having equitable access to higher education is analogous to freedom, and that the skills and knowledge required to critically analyze a given situation are most often acquired in college, particularly in our culture. Somehow though, we find ourselves in a national environment wherein the right and necessity of a liberal arts higher education has been reduced to a conversation of liberal versus conservative political views. The right to a liberal arts education truly means the right to freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And of course, along with that, freedom of political thought as well. As we continue to ardently justify the right to a liberal arts education at Oakland University, we need to recognize the need to engage in a process of holistic education, providing students with a diverse general education portfolio that is tied to a myriad of degrees. We must celebrate 
the range of degree options that we have that we have developed at Oakland University despite our historic underfunding and lack of space. This past year we expanded our portfolio and adding the degrees needed to train professionals to meet the needs of contemporary society. At OU, we have always succeeded despite the odds, and I'm confident that OU's strong legacy will carry on and that the key to our success is truly to embrace our current realities. Since when was a group of terminal degree trained higher education professionals not prepared for a challenge? We're definitely ready for this. What we know about the pandemic is that our students, just at a time when social behaviors and interaction were more needed than ever at their specific juncture of development, found themselves isolated and linked only by technology. As we recover, we know that 28% of our students experience the loss of a family member or know someone who has, rendering mental health issues a real problem right now. If we are hearing through our current media outlets, if we were hearing rather from our current media, media outlets that folks who graduate with a bachelor's degree live five years longer, I think we would be having a very different national conversation. But unfortunately, these simple facts often don't make the national news. The World Economic Forum results show that 17% of students are not returning to college for various reasons. Over 30% are taking advantage of a needy labor market and are waiting until they know with certainty what they want to study. While about one third of our students who stop out don't know what they want to do, many others are deciding their careers later on in life. What is more concerning is that the social determinants, such as not being able to afford living, much less the cost of college, compounded by mental and physical health issues, poor academic performance, and college life since the pandemic are affecting over 25% of discontinuing college students. Underrepresented minorities, many of whom are Pell eligible, now represent over 25% of OU's FIDIACs. We must be more responsive to the context that they're facing. As those shown in the aforementioned survey, demonstrating a large percentage of respondents' major concerns we're having enough food, safe housing, and maintaining good physical health. As we remind ourselves to continue to meet our students where they are, it is important to reframe our thoughts and self-talk to an asset model versus a deficit dialogue. We must also remember that we need to focus on the families of our students to ensure that those who are not living on campus have a supportive learning environment at home and that we are communicating with parents and support persons and sharing these success strategies. At the 2023 AACNU annual meeting, I attended a workshop by neurobiologist Dr. Mays Imad from Connecticut College, a fellow of the Gardner Institute, who's doing some truly amazing work on transcending adversity in trauma-informed educational development. Her workshop taught me so much about how learning through Zoom has affected our interactions. According to polyvagal theory, our nervous system is organized in a hierarchical fashion. As we seek to build increasing resilience, it is important to remind ourselves that we physiologically react, connect, and regulate each other differently on Zoom. For us to gain plasticity, we must strive to keep our students engaged. It is important to remember that bringing students back to the classroom, however normalizing it is for us, may not be the same for them, and we must once again meet our students where they are. As we seek to understand emotional contagion and secondary traumatic stress and how we experience trauma, connection is essential. According to Dr. Imad, we must recognize that we have successfully navigated uncertainty and isolation, as well as the potential loss of meaning in our professional trajectories. Although folks don't often question the need for doctors when they're sick or counselors when they need advice, suddenly the world of higher ed, or the worth of higher ed rather, is under fire. Realities defining our place of work, the physical university, have changed. 
That said, without a doubt, whether it's a teacher, a lawyer, a social worker, a nurse, or a doctor, there is no one in the United States alive today that hasn't been grateful and tremendously thankful to someone with a college degree. Academic Affairs is working hard to ensure that faculty are supported and controlled what it, control what is delivered in the classroom. We are using the Provost Office Post, event calendars, the University Senate, and Provost Office Hours to openly invite communication feedback. We are doing our best to communicate not just the what and the how, but also the why. We are working to reframe the obstacles and difficulties we are facing budgetarily to build a larger understanding of sustainability. We are also trying to create opportunities to celebrate our faculty and staff efforts whenever possible, to showcase achievement and build collective intentional support and knowledge. We would now like to hear from you. Remember I talked about your cell phones, so if you could take them out right now. Um, we want to hear from you about how we can best communicate to the OU community and would like to have you answer a few questions. So if everybody could whip out their cells, you got it, you guys are so good at this, um, and scan the QR code on the screen, we would really appreciate your feedback. To transition, there is much about the persistent effects of structural racism and experiencing life in the United States as an underrepresented minority that we simply don't yet understand. When we think about racism effects on health and the image that states racism makes our patients sick, it also deters from our students' ability to succeed academically. At the same time, education is often the best defense against persistent effects of racism, but only if it is, doing, if it is through doing the work and incorporating supportive, anti-racist, and inclusive approaches. In the classroom, Eliminating, eliminating equity gaps translates to an inclusive, culturally affirming environment. It translates to inclusive pedagogy and the active use of micro affirmations. It translates to inclusive mentorship, diversity positive programs based on realizations of the tragic damage of our history, recognition of cultural and contextual assets, and shedding the fear of deviating from the Western canon to better resonate with our when necessary. It means incorporating best practices that have been empirically effective for diverse populations, such as peer mentoring, inclusive mentoring, and supplemental instruction. Our students don't just live in our classrooms, and life doesn't stop when they come to college. They and their families may have endured considerable hardship, and we must ensure that OU is welcoming as well as culturally responsive and affirming at all times. Again, meeting our students where they are is not only essential for our success, but it is also a moral imperative if we are to honor all four of our strategic priorities. If we are doing our work well, our URM students and others with disadvantage will cease to show an equity gap and no longer be an indicator of overall student success. As enrollment begins to stabilize, we must focus on retention. Unfortunately, we are losing students, particularly URM, in the first year, but also the second year. For our fall 2020 URM FIDIACs, we lost 45% during year one and another 13% throughout year two for a combined loss of 58%. Much of this is undoubtedly due to the pandemic. But in meeting our students where they are, we must adopt best practices, wrap around services, and engage in culturally and contextually resonant pedagogy. President Peskovitz's vision to integrate diversity, equity, and inclusion as a strategic priority translates to ensuring that we are intentionally addressing our equity gaps, particularly asking ourselves if what we are doing now will mitigate these gaps and holding ourselves accountable to DEI metrics. Without doubt, addressing our equity gaps will help us achieve student success. While we definitely have gaps associated with Pell eligibility and first-generation educated status, our most marked gap is with our URM students. We are seeking ways to, to support deans, faculty, and staff to integrate additional high-impact practices, or what we refer to as HIPs, 
into our students' curricular trajectory and ensure that these are accessible to the full range of our students. We are also working with the Division of Student Affairs, Glenn, who leads it, thank you so much, to ensure that both curricular and co-curricular experiences are complementary and support a portfolio that both optimizes and catalyzes student success. As we continue to recover from the pandemic and international students return, we also now have several more active partnerships and are finalizing agreements to facilitate graduate articulation and undergraduate exchange, including the American Semester Abroad Program. As we have reciprocity with Mexico and Canada, Dr. Rosemary Max and her team, in addition to a group of proactive faculty from biology, are building agreements quickly and efficiently to create new pipelines of international students while developing low-cost study abroad opportunities for OU students. We're excited to report that our first group of Mexican students will be here starting in the fall of 2023. Our faculty have been creating initiatives to make sure that our students can access and afford this high impact practice. And I'm pleased to report that we now have 16 programs around the world, several of which are low cost and short term, thus facilitating our working students participation. Wayne Thibodeau, Senior Director of our Career Services Center, is working with Academic Affairs so that both existing and incoming students and their parents and families are well aware of the critical role OU is playing in driving Michigan's workforce development. Thanks to Wayne and his team, as well as our deans and their respective team, teams, for actively working to ensure that our current and prospective students clearly know and are excited about the transformational power of an OU degree. Despite our challenges, there is still a lot of extraordinary work to look forward to regarding the achievements that have taken place on Oakland's campus and beyond. Our OU sale is representative of our strengths, aspirations, innovations, and legacy. If you are a SAIL winner or represent a winning SAIL program, we ask you to please stand when your name is called and remain standing while your slide is displayed. So let's start with the College of Arts and Sciences, our largest unit, which was established in May of 1965. CAS faculty and staff have certainly been busy engaging in a variety of highly productive efforts. The success of the Master of Social Work degree program. Anybody here from social work? If you are, please stand. Thank you. Um, at Oakland University lies in students gaining the requisite theoretical knowledge, skills, and ethical framework for advanced and transformative social work. By building partnerships and pursuing accreditation through the Council on Social Work Education, OU's MSW program aspires to create strong and much needed professional and, mentor, and mental health behavioral, I'm sorry, mental health and behavioral clinical providers. The faculty and staff of social work have built innovative partnerships and internships with social service agencies throughout Southeast Michigan. Thank you so much. The budding bioengineering department, which spans both CAS and the School of Engineering and Computer Sciences, is now ABET accredited for the next five years, which is the maximum time granted. Bioengineering is an innovative joint program with a blended curriculum providing students opportunities to address genomic engineering, biomedical in imaging, imaging, and other important fields of study. ABET accreditation will open a legacy of new career paths for our bioengineering students who will become innovators and leaders for years to come. Bioengineering, could you please stand? <laughs> Doctors Marta Escobar and Mark Manning have received a Procter & Gamble U.S. Higher Education Award for their project, which aims to improve the workforce readiness of undergraduate social science students interested in pursuing community and public health. Mark, Marta, are you here? No? Okay. Um, 
It's not every day that Oakland University, uh, an Oakland University students wins a national championship, but Kellen Dunlap, is he here? A vocal performance major did just that. Thanks, Kellen. I got to hear you sing on Saturday, it was beautiful. So Kellen won the national, won first prize, um, and at a meeting of the National Association of Teachers of Singing, he, won, he also won the Great Lakes in last year and this year, and he earned one of four spots to compete at finals, and then he won the first prize again. So this further establishes Oakland University as a leader in, in the education of vocal performers. So as you can see, despite our challenges, great work is underway. Traveling throughout, US, throughout OU history, and US history as well, in order of the establishment of each unit, let's move on to the School of Business Administration. In 1959, several programs culminated in forming the School of Business Administration, which was then named in 1983, earning accreditation from the Associ Association to Advanced Collegiate Schools of Business, or AACSB International, that same year. The SBA sale this year is the career-focused learning of our students. Per Career Services First Destination Surveys, the number of students with real-world experiences has risen from 79% prior to the pandemic to 92% today. SBA aspires for all students to engage in a variety of career activities to broaden their knowledge and networks while opening their minds to a world of possibility. SBA's new Executives in Residence program affords any business student the opportunity to learn from diverse professionals at the top of their respective organizations. We also have Maria Munchai, who has linked together with the help of, of Ian Kale, a, a group of N NASA internships, which is truly impressive, and she's our student star. The legacy is in the lived experiences that shape each student. The School of Education and Human Services dates back to 1959. Fully established in 1991, the SES curriculum has quickly expanded to include several graduate programs. In celebration of the efforts of, school, of the School of Education and Human Services, there has been no truer representative of our strategic priorities than the successful OU Center for Autism. This year, the center earned a $385,000 grant from the United Way of Michigan to engage in service expansion for youth with autism throughout Oakland County. The OUCA has provided excellent autism programs for over 15 years and is recognized as a center of excellence for employing highly trained expert faculty, staff, and students. The center is a vital part of OU and a beacon of academic excellence. As the director of the SEHS Advising Center, Dr. Roberta Rea has, leads a team of individuals who have elevated advising by making it a student-centered success enterprise. After hearing about the new elementary education program, Kennedy Robinson transferred to Oakland University and has held internships and worked at Romeo Community Schools. Kennedy is now in her junior year and will student teach a lucky class next winter 2024. I didn't see anybody stand up from the School of Ed, so please stand and be recognized. Thank you. The School of Engineering and Computer Science was also established in May of 1965, followed by an accredited master's degree two years later and a doctorate two years after that. A testament to the cutting edge work being accomplished in SECS is that not one, but two faculty have won the prestigious career award this year. Dr. Jeff Louie, Assistant Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering, received a 586,000 five-year NSF career award for his projects towards programmable social robots for everyone. 
Dr. June Chen, also an assistant professor of electrical and computer engineering, received a $500,000 Early Career Development Award to fund his project, Reconfigurable and Predictive Control with Reinforcement Learning for Active Battery Cell Balancing. Sounds complicated. So this is the first time in Oakland's history, not one, but two faculty have won the, this exemplary award in a single year, resulting in both of these faculty earning this year's SECS's Shining Stars Award. As a freshman, Will Compton was offered not one, but two. There's a theme in twos here, Louie. I don't know, somewhere. Um, earning two internships at his first IT Career Award Fair. Will reported, I received offers from both companies following my interviews. I'm really excited to be getting so much experience in just my first year at university. Great job. So now let's move on to the School of Health Sciences. BS degrees in medical and environmental health technology and medical physics were moved to the newly founded Center for Health Sciences in 1976 under the center's associate provost, Moon J. Pak. The center was transformed into the School of Health Sciences in 1985. The SAIL Award this year goes to the accredited Master of Public Health program, which has successfully doubled enrollment and added a joint MD and PH program. Under the leadership of shining star, Dr. Caress Dean, is Caress here? <laughs> the program is leaving a strong legacy of community engagement and student practicums throughout Southeast Michigan. Recently, Caress also received a $1.4 million grant for her DEI-focused work from the U.S. Health Resources Services Administration. SHS is also home to Dion Shell. Is Dion here? Dion's work is on diversifying the physical therapy profession. Dion's aspiration is to mentor future leaders in human movement science. In the fall of 1974, 300 nursing students started taking non-clinical courses at OU, and a full BSN was soon created. In July of 1975, a new school of nursing was established. This year, SON developed an academic and practice partnership entitled the Corwell Health Nurse Scholars Program, for which it received $20.7 million to build infrastructure and provide grants to 500 nursing students over a five-year period. The Corwell Health Nurse Scholars Program will use best practices and expand the pre-licensure program to produce high-quality nursing nurses, thus addressing the dire nursing shortage. Associate Professor Claudia Grobel can be best described as always leading by example. Claudia's successful service-oriented leadership is amplified by her caring nature and her strong inspirational mentorship. She contributed greatly to the Corwell Health Nurse Scholars Program and coordinates the Clinical Nurse, Clinical Nurse Leaders Master's Program as well. Her legacy as a servant leader in the School of Nursing is renowned. Miriam Rumier earned her BSN in 2019, graduating magna cum laude. She was a member of several OU associations and served as a volunteer at the Grace Center of Hope caring for the medically underserved. Miriam now works at Corwell East and has served on the medical first aid team for the Senior Olympics as a volunteer for the American Red Cross and was appointed as a student representative of the MICNP. Miriam was recently recognized by the National American Arab Nurses Association and at the 11th annual Angel of Mercy Awards. So anyone here from that group, please stand. From the School of Nursing, please stand and be recognized. In January 20, 2007, recognizes, recognizing the need for more physicians, OU and Beaumont initiated the accreditation of a new allopathic medical school through the Liaison Committee on Medical Education. In 2011, OUWB opened its doors to its first medical school cohort. 
OUWB continues to successfully recruit very strong students, resulting in impressive match rates. And this year, we witnessed a 100% residency match rate for the class of 2023, which is truly remarkable. The establishment of the OUWB body do donation program has been a de definite success with folks making a pre-death decision to donate their bodies, thus providing students a more humanistic way to study anatomy. Physicians-to-be study the same donor throughout the course of the school year, making these donors their very first patients. Without doubt, donors play the most important role. A mausoleum in Mount Avon Cemetery in Rochester has been designated as the final resting place for our donors, which was gifted by the city of Rochester. This year, Dr. Jason Wasserman successfully led the establishment of OU Center for Moral Values in Health and Medicine, as well and was its inaugural director. This best-in-class bioethics center is making original and impactful contributions to research and teaching. Jason's vision was to establish a center at OU that leveraged existing resources and has a sustainability plan baked into its DNA. So Jason, are you here? We need you to stand. Can you please stand? Thank you. The center includes humanism and medicine, clinical bioethics, social justice, and community health, focal areas that already exist within the OUWB landscape. Nicholas Milkey is a successful co-author and a fourth-year medical student who played a key role in publishing two research papers in Lancet and the Lancet Regional Health Americas, no less. Nicholas and Professor Amit Ball from the Department of Emergency Medicine at Corwell Health East collab collaborated, and Nicholas was involved in all aspects of the research studies, from manuscript design to study preparation, analyzing aggregate data, and examining over 4,500 emergency department visits. Could we have, is Nicholas here? Nicholas? Well, let's give him a hand anyway. <laughs> the Honors College launched in 1977, upholding the founder's vision for academic excellence that guides us even today at OU. The Honors College success has been in achieving the highest number of graduates in OU history. The Honors College aspires to be the top in the nation on retention, graduation, and student success. Today, we celebrate a family legacy, the Mary family legacy, a family wherein every member is a current or recent Honors College student or graduate. Could the Marys please stand? Are any of the Marys here? Not today. Well, it's still a remarkable story. So, <laughs> furthermore, all family members contribute as teaching assistants or in service to student organizations at OU. So let's honor Malik Mary and Adam Mary, health science majors, Enos Mary, a BIS major, Murray Mary, a psychology major, Jenna Mary, a biology major, and Sarah Mary, a freshman health science major. Kevin, I think you're going to win this one. You've got three Marys, so that's a truly happy place. So here's to the Marys, a shining, shining representatives of a great tradition of Golden Grizzly families. The graduate school has truly transformed and adopted a new, center, a new student success oriented structure with designated teams who serve as liaisons to students, faculty and staff to support them from admission through graduation. It has developed an innovative reporting system that better tracks workflow to undergird its ultimate legacy as a national leader in graduate education. Over 70 graduate students share their research each year, and Drs. Kondratek and Groom spend countless hours working to ensure the success of the Graduate Student Research Conference. Todd Steele and Nicole Fernandez Jurado served as the graduate school team planning the third annual three-minute thesis competition and graduate student showcase. Their dedication to prospective and current OU students is truly exemplary. Could they please stand? Are any of them here today? 
There we go. Thanks, Darlene. Is Ahmed here today? Ahmed Alobaydan, a doctoral in education student in organizational leadership, has served as the events coordinator of the Saudi Student Association. Ahmed has most definitely been a leader and a community builder and regularly plans events and activities to teach the campus more about Saudi Arabian history and culture. Thank you so much, Ahmed. And please thank Ahmed if you see him. <laughs> Moving to the intellectual hub on our campus, our university libraries. The Successful Affordable Course Materials Initiative awards faculty for converting their courses to use low or no cost materials, saving students an average of $40,000 in textbook costs per semester. The program's aspiration is to ensure that campus-wide policies and practices are student-centered. Through innovating with the registrar's office, a, court, a course designation now allows students to identify these options. Professor Julia Rodriguez has most definitely been a shining star in leading the affordable material movement, course material movement across campus. The I Research Institute, or ERI, is certainly a legacy destination on campus, with, with its founding faculty having garnered the prestigious Lasker Award. The establishment of the OUWB I Research Center, or ERC, renovation of the I Research Institute, or ERI, and the establishment of the state-of-the-art core facility has been a definite success. Partnership between OU, OUWB, and Corwell in Vision Research makes OU a leader in eye research and facilitates connections across the globe through a virtual lecture series. A major success has been the reemergence of the SUPER program from the pandemic after a two-year hiatus. SUPER aspires to secure external funding from the Pediatric Retina Research Foundation to extend opportunities to undergraduate students as well. Dr. Dao Chi Zhang has mentored several students who have won national prizes while building collaborations as co-investigator and principal investigator on several successful NIH grants. ERI student star Yasmin Hassan is a former super student and undergraduate researcher in Dr. Zhang's laboratory. She has received a Grants in Aid Award from the Sigma Psi Society for which she won the best prize for oral presentation, or the first first place, sorry, for oral presentation in biology and biotechnology this year. And I know some folks are here from the ERI because they're right in front of me. So would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you. And I know Yasmin is getting ready for other applications as well. So best of luck. Despite our shared setbacks, we have been able to expand our research efforts and secure a stronger position as an R2. This is purely due to an outstanding faculty who are working both tirelessly and passionately on their respective research. I would like to thank Vice President Stone, right here. Um, I knew it was, you were right in front of me somewhere, and his staff for ensuring our ability to grow while lessening our reliance on tuition revenue to support faculty scholarship. Just last week, I was able to participate in an institutional grants workshop held by the Office of Research. It was really exciting. Institutional grants would provide us with a level of support we have not yet achieved and place us on the national map for mentoring and training OU's strongest legacy, our students. Over the past decade, the OU research culture has been steadily advancing, and we have increased total external grant funding by 250%. <laughs> Tremendous growth has occurred this year to rectify OU's lowest space allocation per student of the 15 Michigan public universities. As we delve into new spaces, we are happy to report that the engineering faculty have begun to move into the innovation, innovation and research building in Rochester Hills. This speaks directly to the quality, the commitment, and the effort of our faculty and staff. And it also invites a shift in thinking from continuing to grow 
our established research culture to enhancing our capabilities by expanding our capacity. We are investing strategically and receiving support from the state of Michigan and other sources to improve our teaching and learning environments. We're happy to report that the current projects are on schedule and many will be finished by fall of 2023, just right around the corner. These include the first phase of OU West Campus, classrooms in Elliott Hall and Varner Hall. The OUWB renovation will be completed by fall of 2024, as will the South Foundation Hall. Originally designed to address the need for virtual learning and student success in traditional OU classroom, the CSITS team has been focused on introducing GrizzFlex, which facilitates students' ability to attend classes remotely. I want to thank Doug McCartney and his team for their outstanding work every day. Our ELIST team continues to support exceptional online teaching and learning services. The office supports 54 online programs and over 500 faculty have taken the quality online teaching course. In the current semester, 57% of our students are taking at least one online course, and 32% of our faculty are teaching at least one online course. I commend this highly energetic team for their top-notch service. The SETTLE team is offering past successful programs such as the Teaching Toolbox series, while developing new ones like collaborating with the Office of Institutional Research assessment and data analytics, or what we call now ORIDA, to offer the certificate-based student success and equity dashboard training. If you all haven't already done so, please participate in a SETTLE workshop. I'm so impressed with the energy and creativity of Sarah Hosh and her team. OU continues to build data-informed culture and decision-making, led by ORIDA, ORADA, sorry, OIRADA, I'm gonna to get to pronounce that correctly. The second Data Literacy Institute is well underway. 16 faculty and staff from cross-functional areas are engaged in this intensive semester-long experience. I'm really looking forward to hearing their research findings and how these results can make meaningful impacts on our campus. A hearty congratulations is also due to the OIRADA team for winning the best presentation at the Regional Association for Institutional Research Conference and for being selected to represent not just OU, but the entire state of Michigan in presenting at the National Conference next month. We are continuing to work with deans to create measurable initiatives to minimize our equity gaps in courses with high C minus D FWI rates with the ultimate goal of increasing retention and graduation. Using inclusive pedagogy, supplemental instruction, and other high impact practices, we'll be working with the deans, chairs, and faculty to develop measurable initiatives to promote equity in student success. As we stabilize enrollment, we must now focus on it on retention and will provide opportunities to learn from each other and celebrate our successes. As you probably know by now, I am really excited about the work we're doing with the Student Success and Equity Dashboard and wanna offer my profound thanks to all of you who are actively engaging and transforming your pedagogical approaches based on how to best support your student success as we strive to create an equitable approach to teaching and learning among OU's increasingly diverse student population, we are preparing to become a minority serving institution or what we know as an MSI. Given our FIDIAC or first time in any college student population of over 25% URMs, OU could be an MSI within the next five to 10 years, but only if we are able to retain our FIDIAC population and our increasingly diverse students as they progress towards their degrees. We must remain cognizant that the negative impact of the pandemic on our students' progression is not over, and that once again, we must meet them where they are. 
You may be certain that with the guidance of strategic enrollment management, leadership at OU is doing everything we can to stabilize enrollment, improve retention, and that every, each and every student who comes to OU with a dream of a degree is able to succeed. Faculty and staff <clears throat> have been diligently in preparation for the May submission of our Carnegie Association for Designation as a community engaged campus. We are grateful for the guidance of Andrea Monroe, as well as the Senate committees and faculty and staff who volunteered their expertise to ensure the strongest application possible. Accountability and measurement of our work will be essential if we are to move our community engagement agenda forward. Starting this summer and fall, we will be providing Give Pulse training to the OU community. We must again hold ourselves accountable to measuring the impact and realizing our transformative potential. Through qualitative and quantitative evaluation, it's essential to our success as a community engaged campus. In light of the recent shootings and coming off of a three year pandemic, we're working to ensure that we can focus on teaching and learning, knowing that our campus is prepared for any emergency. In this effort, we're updating our loudspeaker systems, among other proactive measures, to remain the safest campus in Michigan. I wanna thank Chief Gordon and, I, and his staff, as well as our new CFO, Steve Mackey, for facilitating these security measures. And I don't think I've clapped for a while, so I wanna clap for all those people. And here comes another big clap. The draft document of the four-year Higher Learning Commission Assurance Argument was shared with the campus community for comment. It is with sincere gratitude that I acknowledge the incredible group of individuals led by Associate Provost Kristen landis Pivovar, who have supported the preparation of this document. I extend my thanks to Aura Casares, Nancy Fetzer, Shane Lewis, Roberta Rea, Brandy Randall, Claire Rammel, Irene Shabazz, Ruben Tiernes, Trisha Westergaard, and Song Yang. Yen. And I know that folks are in the room, so please stand. Thank you. I'm also thankful to all of you who participated by providing feedback. You too have contributed to this product and your knowledge and expertise have been invaluable. As we continue to provide faculty offerings, undergird accreditation and curricular quality assurance, we are working with the Senate through proactive shared governance to make certain that our policies, our constitution and committee structure and charges make, meet the needs of a, our rapidly changing higher ed environment. We are really excited about the $85 million, the best initiative to power a responsive interdisciplinary workforce to meet the health and human service needs of Southeast Michiganders. We are seeking both state and federal funding to support both programs, students and the facilities needed. I wanna talk a little bit about the best and where we are. OU does such a fantastic job with Pockets of Interprofessional Education or IPE throughout our diverse disciplines. Although there are IPA, IPE training centers nationally, the best would facilitate the first IPE training center with, with a community facing clinic, facilitating our ability to serve as strong stewards of place while building additional revenue and providing preceptor sites for, for both our faculty and students. We're excited about the best for many reasons, because we know that ultimately IPE or interprofessional education saves lives, resources, and time while improving patient outcomes and provider satisfaction. The best would also mitigate the great resignation that we've seen by creating a cadre of revolutionary professionals who are trained in the roles of other health and human service professionals, enabling them and enabling us to respond more effectively, more efficiently, and more quickly to emerging public health issues. OU West Campus also presents us with an ideal location to add these services to our Pontiac Initiative. Finally, we're excited because we know that more than any of the other 15 Michigan public universities, students trained at OU represent a brain gain 
because Grizzly graduates are more, more likely to practice their professions in the great state of Michigan. President Peskovitz <clears throat> is continuing to strive for 45, a legacy that she has built and stewarded to ensure that the long history of disparate state funding comes to a close. She is working tirelessly with Vice President Rochelle Black and her team to advocate for us to receive the full 4,500 this year, as opposed to building the amount over the next two years. Furthermore, as we combat our historic overdependence on tuition revenue, we will be seeking increasingly diversified streams of funding through innovative ways to garner revenue. Working with our new CFO and the entire campus community, we will build diverse revenue streams that enable us to better weather enrollment challenges while remaining focused on resourcing our strategic priorities. To ensure our access to high impact practices, we are also onboarding the award-winning NIH approved AIM program, advancing inclusive mentoring. We have worked with Vice President Stone in selecting a diverse group of research faculty to become train the trainers in inclusive mentorship. AIM is designed to help faculty learn inclusive best practices in working with undergraduate and graduate students across disciplines on research and creative efforts. AIM has been proven effective in increasing knowledge and skills associated with mentoring diverse and underrepresented students in research. In addition to my Dean Dream Team's daily responsibilities in their respective units and the ongoing collaborations with the Provost's Office, our deans have played important roles in leadership transitions. I am grateful to Dean Louis Shamra for leading in the successful hire of Dr. Chuck Pierce, our new Dean of the School of Business Administration. Dr. Christopher Coleman will be assuming the position of Dean for the School of Nursing on May 15th this year after he completes his transition from Purdue University. Dr. Coleman brings with him extensive research, teaching, administrative experience, and a truly impressive intersectional DEI work trajectory. I wanna thank Dean Elaine Carey for her leadership in the search process and the committee for their critical efforts Given the high demand for nursing deans at this time in our nation's history, Dr. Dean Carey and the search committee met this challenge with dogged determination. Thank you does, simply doesn't suffice in recognizing the work of interim dean, Dr. Suha Cridley, who's right over there. I can point out a few folks. She has governed with vision integrity and incredible insight, and we are so grateful for her sage guidance and look forward to all the great things she's yet to do. Under the leadership of Dean Louis Shamra, the School of Medicine Dean Search Committee has selected four very strong candidates for the next leader of OUWB. Campus interviews will conclude this month. At a June reception, we will have the opportunity to honor Dean Dwayne Mezwa and recognize him for his steadfast guidance. Is Dwayne here? No, I think he's at a conference. He couldn't be here today. As we continue to meet our students where they are, even if it's different than where they were prior to the pandemic, we will provide our faculty and staff with the most support possible in learning new strategies for inclusive student success. As life lifelong earner, learners, I realize that the challenges we collectively face are calling you to learn more now than ever. In honoring student success as our compass, please remember that it is both heart and head work that will get us through this transformational moment in Oakland University's history. Please know that we are proactively seeking and building diverse sources of revenue working with faculty to integrate high impact practices, prioritizing campus safety, and supporting shared governance and transparent communication. I wanna reiterate that throughout this year, it has been an honor and a privilege to be working with you. And I once again wanna thank you for all you do every day for OU. Thank you. Thank you.